I have made this video in response to all the comments and questions I've had about the tune I used as a sound check at the end of the video how to make a cheap acoustic guitar play like an expensive one. So in case you didn't see that video here's the clip of me doing that sound check. Because that was just a sound check, it's very informal and it was brought to an end early, so the ending's different on the original. However, you'll get the chance to hear the whole song later in this tutorial. The rest of this tutorial will be broken down into three main parts. The first part will be techniques and tips you'll need to be able to play the tune. The second part will just be the tune, a video of it being played, so that you can familiarise yourself with it. And the third part will be how to play the actual tune. Right, let's get on with it and start with part one, exercises to help you play the tune. Hopefully you already know all the chords we'll be using in these exercises and in the tune. But if not, pause the video here and just revise them. Don't worry about the G6, we'll look at that later. You'll almost definitely need the tab in order to follow these exercises and you will definitely need the tab to follow the tune. And you can find the tab at ebooksforguitar.com and it's available to view online there free. You'll find the link below in the description. Exercise 1 and 2 are learning the finger picking patterns. So let's continue. Exercise 1. The first finger picking pattern we'll have a look at is primary, index, middle, annular, middle, index, middle, index. And we haven't had a look at this pattern before. So let's just try that finger picking pattern a few times with an A minor. For this tutorial, I'll have the metronome set at 120 beats per minute. Here that is again, and if you can, try playing along with it, otherwise just try practicing it. Once you feel reasonably happy playing the finger picking pattern, you can move on to try the rest of the exercise. Before we go any further with this exercise, let's just have a quick look at the G6. Now, in the actual tune, we'll be using two G6s. 
but the one for this exercise can be played with literally one finger. And here's what it looks like. We just place the third finger in the third fret of the bottom E string. And the reason we use a third finger is so it's easier to get between this chord and the other chords we need to get to. Right, here's what exercise one sounds like. Let's see and hear that played again. And this time, if you feel you can, try playing along with it. But if not, don't worry about it. Try practicing it first without any backing. And then once you get it to a reasonable speed, you can try playing along. Once you think you understand exercise 1 and you feel you can play it ok, move on to exercise 2. Exercise 2. Introducing Pinches. If you look at the first bar of exercise 2, which is a C, you'll notice that the first note is two notes together. And if you look at the fingers above the score, you'll notice that the primary and the annular are being played together and this is being denoted by the bracket over the top. So what you're doing is pinching the two strings at the same time and this is what it looks like. Here it is again, but try playing along with it if you can. However, it is important you use the correct fingers, otherwise the rest of the finger picking pattern won't fall into place. Once you can pinch those two notes, you'll notice the rest of the finger picking pattern is the same as the previous finger picking pattern you've done. So it should sound like this.
try to play this finger picking pattern yourself with the pinch just on the C and practice that over a few times until you feel fairly comfortable with it. You can now try to put exercise two together. Here's what it looks and sounds like. Here it is again, but this time, if you feel you can, try playing along with it. But if you can't, don't worry, as usual, go away, practice it, until you get it, till you're reasonably happy with it, and then perhaps you can try playing along with it. Exercise 3. Playing the tune with the annular finger. If you look at this exercise, you'll notice you do a pretty normal finger picking pattern, P, I, M, A, but then you repeat the annular finger several times to create part of the tune. You then do the same thing with the next chord, and so on. So here's what the first two bars look and sound like. You might have noticed that when I play this exercise, I try to maintain as much as the chord shape as I can. And this is to make the whole effect smoother and cleaner, and to save me moving away from a string that I just had to come back to. This is a really useful and fairly simple technique that can really improve the way you sound. But if you want to find out more about it, look at my video on speeding up chord changes. Here's the first two bars again. Try playing along with it. Otherwise, just practice it, but here's what it sounds like. Here's the entire of exercise three.
Let's see and hear that done again. Practice exercise three until you're reasonably happy with it and then move on to exercise four. Exercise four, slides. The last three exercises are very short exercises, either one or two bars. Exercise four is two bars. To play exercise four, firstly, play the first fret with the first finger. Then play the third fret with the third finger and slide to the 5th fret without re-plucking the string. Next, play the 1st fret again with the 1st finger, and then play it again, but this time slide to the 5th fret again without re-plucking the string. Then you repeat this all again. We know we don't re-pick the string when we're doing the slide because of the slur line over the top, which is the bar. If the slur line wasn't there, we'd have to pick the string twice. However, in this exercise, and in the tune you're preparing for, there is a slur line. So, you pluck the string once, and slide to the next note without re-picking the string. Let's see and hear that done a few times. Let's see and hear that again, and if you can, play along with it, otherwise practice it. Exercise 5. More slides. In this exercise, we're going to put the slide in the same context as if we were playing the tune. And what we do is we finger pick through an A minor and then slide the first finger to the fifth fret without re picking it. So let's see and hear that done a few times. Let's see and hear that done again, and as usual, if you can, play along with it, otherwise you know how it's supposed to look and sound, so you can go and practice it. The final exercise, exercise 6, pulling off. If you take a look in this exercise, you'll see the 1 going to a 0 with a slur line bar above it and a P. Now, as with the previous exercise, 
The bar above it, or the slur line, means you only play the note once. However, so you, it still rings on the open string, what you have to do is pluck with your first finger as you're pulling it away from the first fret. So it looks like this. Let's see and hear that played again. Have a play with that technique before you try the exercise. But here's what the exercise looks and sounds like. Let's see and hear that played again, and if you can, try playing along with it. Part 2. Familiarise yourself with the actual tune. This is the recorded version of the whole tune being played from start to finish.
3. How to play The Troubled Heart by Sad Fantasy This tune can be broken down into two main themes, so we'll look at theme 1 first. Now, looking at theme 1, if you look more closely at the first bar, you'll see it repeats at the beginning of each line and two places in the middle of the lines. So, in total, six places in the whole of theme 1. So, it's fair to say that this is nearly half of the first theme. Let's just learn this bar on its own in isolation first. At the beginning of the first bar, we run straight up an A minor with our primary, index, middle, annular finger, and then we slide to the fifth fret without repicking. We've actually covered that part of the first bar in the previous exercises. However, to complete the first bar, we keep the first finger on the fifth fret and roll it across to play the fifth fret on the top E string. Then we play the seventh fret with the third finger and the eighth fret with the fourth finger. Let's hear that done twice with a metronome at 120 beats per minute. Let's see and hear that done again, and as usual, if you can, try playing along with it, otherwise you can pause the video and try practicing it. Right, let's do the rest of the first line. And we've already got the first and third bars, so we need to learn to play the second and fourth bars. And I could actually summarise these both bars by play the notes with your third finger. The most difficult of these two bars is the second bar, because you've got to go between the eighth fret on the top E string and the third fret on the bottom E string. However, the fourth bar is very easy because you're already in the right position. It's just getting the finger picking pattern correct. Let's see and hear the first two bars being played. Let's see and hear that again, and if you can, try playing along. Let's see and hear the last two bars of line one being played. Let's see and hear that again. Right, let's put that together and let's see and hear the whole of the first line being played. Let's see and hear that again, and if you can, try playing along with it. Otherwise, it might be worth pausing the video here and just practicing the first line until you're fairly comfortable with it. Right, 
Let's move on to the second line. And you'll notice straight away, you already know the first bar. However, the next two bars we need to look at, especially bar three, where we introduce a new variation of the D minor chord. But before we do that, let's have a look at the first two bars. Here they are played at 120 beats per minute. You'll notice to achieve the 10th fret, we have to slide the 4th finger up from the 8th fret. However, for the rest of this bar, you can remain in that position. So you play the 8th fret with the 2nd finger and the 7th fret with the 1st finger. Let's see and hear that again. Right, let's look at the third bar now, where we introduce this new D minor. And it's played with the first finger on the fifth fret of the top E string and the second finger on the sixth fret of the B string and the third finger on the seventh fret of the G string. Now the bass is played on the open D string. So try to play that a couple of times before we go any further. Unfortunately, once you've got the D minor, you've only got half of that bar. The second half of the bar involves playing the tune with the little finger and the annular and index finger. Let's see and hear that done a couple of times. Let's see and hear that being played again, and if you think you can, try play along with it. However, don't worry if you can't. At this stage now, it may take you a couple of days or even a week to master one small part of a tune like this, but it's well worth the effort. Once you're at least happy you understand this last bar, we can look at the final bar of the second line. And you'll be happy to know it's a really easy A minor. Even though the final bar is very easy, let's see and hear it being played twice. Let's see and hear that one more time. So now let's hear the complete second line.
Let's see and hear that again, and if you can, play along. Right, let's put the first and the second line together and let's hear that played. Let's see and hear that again, and this time, if you can, play along with it. If you're still having trouble with this bit, it might be worth pausing the video and practicing the first two lines until you feel reasonably happy with them. You'll be happy to know that line 3 is identical to line 1, so all you have to do is play line 1 again. Let's do that as a revision exercise. Right, let's look at the last line of theme 1. And you'll notice straight away that the first bar is one we've already covered several times. And it's the bar that repeats itself six times in the whole of theme 1. The rest of this line is very similar to the second line of theme 1. However, there are some glaring differences. The biggest of which being the final bar and this is a new shape of A minor we haven't looked at yet. So let's look at this shape of A minor before we go any further. To play this shape of A minor, you have to cover the fifth fret of the top three strings, that's the G, B and top E string, with the first finger in the fifth fret. However, the root or the base of the chord is the open A. Therefore, you've got a note in the middle that you shouldn't play, and that's the D string. So, to practice this chord initially, we'll just strum the top three strings. So, let's hear that done now, four times. Let's now see and hear that bar done with the finger picking. I'll play it twice with the bars rest between them. Let's see and hear that again, and if you think you can, try playing along with it.
If you're having trouble holding down three strings with one finger, you might find that your finger is too crooked, in which case try to straighten it out a bit. This might involve moving your thumb around the neck of the guitar towards the floor. Or make sure your first finger is parallel with the frets. If it isn't, you might find that you're overlapping the frets and therefore you need to rotate your whole hand round so that your first finger becomes parallel with the frets or at six o'clock. If you still find you can't cover the three strings or it's hit and miss and sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't, it might be just that you need to build up the strength in your finger and therefore this will only come with practice. So keep practicing it even with dead notes and what you'll find is it'll eventually just clear up by itself for no apparent reason and I've seen this time and time again with my own students. Right, let's go back to the beginning of the last line of theme one and play the first two bars. You'll notice that in the second bar, you have to move from the 10th fret to the 12th fret by sliding up the 4th finger and then you return to the 10th fret using the 2nd finger. So let's see those two bars again. Let's see and hear that again, and as usual, if you can, play along with it, otherwise it might be worth pausing the video and practicing it. Looking at the third bar of this line, you'll notice you're using the new shape of D minor. And again, you're using the fourth finger to play the melody. So let's see and hear that done twice. Let's see and hear that again. Right, let's bring all this together and play the last line of theme one. Let's see and hear that again, and if you can, play along with it. Right. Let's hear the entire of theme one.
Let's see and hear that again. And if you think you can, try playing along with it. Otherwise, this is a good place to pause the video or even stop it and practice theme one until you're happy with it. Don't worry if it takes you a week or more. It's better to take it slowly and get it properly than to try and speed through it because what you do then is you just get confused and lose track of what you've learnt. Theme 2 of The Troubled Heart by Sad Fantasy. Let's see and hear the whole thing done first before we learn it. You'll be pleased to know that this theme is a lot easier than theme one in my opinion and most of the techniques that you'll be using in this we've already covered in the exercises building up to this tune so you should find it relatively easy if you take a quick general overview of this theme you'll notice that it's basically made up of repeats with slight variations in the finger picking so for example the first two lines are more or less identical to the second two lines and the first two bars are identical to the second two bars which are very similar to the third line so once you've got the basic idea of what's going on in this part of the tune the rest should be fairly self-explanatory let's see and hear the first line of theme two Let's take a detailed look at the first bar of this line. First you play an A minor as we've done previously. However then you pull off the first finger to the open string. Then you put the first finger back and re-pick it. And then you play the fourth finger in the third fret of the B string and slide it to the fifth fret without re-picking it. Finally, you go from the 4th finger in the 5th fret to the 1st finger in the 1st fret of the B string. This is a big gap, so you might have to practice it a few times before you perfect it. 
Let's see and hear that done a couple of times. Let's see and hear that again. To play the second bar, we simply use a G6. And then by repeating the first two bars, we have the whole of the first line. So let's hear that played. Let's see and hear that played again, and as usual, if you can, try playing along with it. Let's see and hear the second line of theme two. You'll notice with the first bar of the second line that you're doing a very similar movement as you did in the first bar of line one, except this time you're working from the D minor open chord. The rest of the line is just repeats and open chords. So let's hear that again. And if you can, try playing along with it. Let's bring the first two lines of theme two together and then you can practice them until you're fairly comfortable with them. So let's see and hear the first two lines of theme two being played. Right, let's see and hear that done again. The second two lines of theme two are very similar to the first two lines and therefore there's no new techniques to learn. The only difference is very slight differences in the finger picking pattern. So keep your eyes open for that.
and the final line of theme two is simply an open A minor. So let's hear the last three lines of theme two being played through. Let's see and hear that again, and as usual, try playing along with it if you think you're ready. Right, let's hear the entire of theme two. Once you think you're ready, let's bring theme one and theme two together and let's see and hear the entire tune played through.
Let's see and hear that again. And if you think you're ready, try playing along with it. If you enjoyed this lesson, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new lessons. And there's plenty of other lessons at my YouTube channel and in the playlist you'll find complete courses. I've also arranged the videos more clearly at the website ebooksforguitar.com and there you'll find all the videos I've got on my channel with the ebooks which can be viewed for free online, or if you prefer to download them and print them, you can buy them for a minimal price. And of course, thank you very much for watching.